My name is Mumbles, and this is my first video on a web series I'm going to call The Mumbles Problem. As you can imagine, this show is all about finding those problems in games we love and figuring out how we can fix them. Ah, fuck it. Honestly, this video series is going to be about whatever the fuck I want. Skyrim! Skyrim is a game that I sunk 99 hours into. I love trekking through the forest, sniping dudes from bushes, fucking up dragons, and then befriending dragons. I love that the Nords weren't just the rebel alliance with fantastic blonde hair, and instead actually seemed less accepting than the Imperial overlords. There's complexity riding along the surface of this game. Factions have certain quirks you wouldn't know about unless you ask around or just spend time in the world. It's superficially immersive, like splashing around in a kiddie pool. You see the trees, you hike up the mountains, you sit by the fire at the inn, and you feel like this is your world. But it doesn't really want you to roleplay. In Fallout New Vegas, I know people who successfully played a character they had in mind. A legionnaire who went to the strip for booze, prostitutes, and drugs, even if his comrades didn't approve. An NCR ranger who had to infiltrate the Caesar's Legion alone. A scientist who had an axe to grind with the Brotherhood of Steel. The thing that made this playstyle possible in Fallout New Vegas was partially due to the conversation trees and multiple ways to approach a situation. You were given many different options, allowed to turn your back on someone at the very last moment and talk your way out of difficult situations. While Fallout New Vegas wasn't that popular when it first came out, these role-playing elements are being noticed more and more by people who want to not only explore the game, but interact with it as well. So, what's the problem with Skyrim? Let's look at Riften, which embodies exactly how I feel about this game. Aesthetically speaking, it's a beautiful little town. Maybe not as staggering or gorgeous as some of the other cities, but it's a fun little place to run around. The entire town is actually vertical with houses and shops stacked on top of each other over a canal leading out to a big body of water. There's a lot of houses and sewers to explore and a beautiful little graveyard and gardens. There's plenty of places to sneak around and steal from. There's dynamic events. There's a corrupt mobster woman in charge. It's just a cool little city. But the problem lies in how it greets your character right off the bat. Let's say you were playing someone that was a completely good guy, never stole, never killed anyone unless they attacked you first, never did any shady dealings for money, never gave in to corrupt politics. In fact, you pride yourself on making a character that is the golden boy, the Clark Kent of Skyrim. How would you feel if that didn't matter? How jarring is it to have a character walk right up to you and tell you that he can see you haven't made your money honestly? That's not role-playing. That's lazy quest-giving. And it makes the player want to give up trying to be unique in the character they're making. It would have been better if the game knew what kind of character you were. How awesome would it have been if you could have stopped the theft instead of being asked to partake in it? And then another NPC, let's say the lioness woman, stops you on the street and asks you if you want to clean up the town with her vigilante style. You could have a whole slew of new quests that involve stopping the thieves' guild, ending the mobster's reign on the city, and making the whole place a safer town to live in. Let me repeat that. You could have been Batman. Let's say that you think the vigilantes are too wild card. What if you could have cleaned up the town with politics and charm, taking the mob down not with force, but with the law and your own wit? See, that's role-playing. People say that having different weapons and shouts in the game is enough to count, but it's not. Role-playing games used to be about creating a character that reacts to situations uniquely, which in turn immerses you deeper into the game. Like I said, I love Skyrim. Remember when it first came out and we were all playing it together and chatting about it on the internet? That meant it was a good game, but it doesn't have any replay value for me because I feel like the game doesn't acknowledge my own nerdy need to create characters with personality and differences. That's what makes role-playing games what they are, and that's what we need in the next Elder Scrolls game. Again, best Elder Scrolls story, any of the games. Here I go. I had to kill this dude, right? Old guy, retired cop, whatever. 
only came out during the day, surrounded by guards. You were supposed to kill him with a bow and arrow, but I was a sneaky stab person. I wanted to do it my way. So I was like, all right, I'll poison apple him. For a week, I gave him a poison apple at different times during the day. He never ate it. So I was like, fuck it. I went down to the place where he ate. It was this tower filled with like 20 guards. I ran up the stairs. I jumped on the table. I took the bread from his plate. I threw down a poison apple. And as I'm jumping off the balcony with all these guards chasing me, midair, I get the prompt that he's dead. And I landed and I was like, yeah. And then the guards were like, oh, pay this fine for uh, intruding where you're not supposed to go. And they never knew I killed him.